Hello, my name is Hugun Song. Today I'm going to talk about a new method to uh, identify and quantify PSL events in relation to testing audio devices. This work has been carried out together with my colleague Alan Ku, uh, but today uh, I will be the one presenting the work. PSL noise has been a major uh, problem uh, for many different industries, including uh, electroacoustics as well as the uh, automotive industries. Uh, it uh, certainly degrade uh, the quality of the product, uh, uh, so therefore it uh, has been uh, addressed uh, to deal with uh, as soon as uh, the problem appears. Impulsiveness metrics um, are used uh, for detecting such event. And uh, these uh, three researchers uh, have uh, actually uh, done this uh, before. And the idea is to make use of a hearing model to mimic uh, how we perceive the sound. And output of the hearing model is actually uh, post-processed to uh, detect the impulsive, impulsive uh, events in the signal. So uh, it's uh, the more analytical impulses has been analyzed, as well as the how people perceive the impulsive events are considered as well. Other researches could be uh, the second one, uh, PLIPL, has suggested to use a residual distortion, uh, which is the uh, difference between the measured output and the desired output. And it's a quite effective way. Uh, that's what ultimate goal is actually to compare the ideal one versus the actual uh, the, the signal. Uh, however, this does not take into account the perceptual aspects, for example, like a hearing threshold or the loudness. Third approach uh, is making use of our PAQ metric. And this uh, approach is, uh, is good because PAQ is actually designed for uh, quantifying the audio quality. However, the output of the PAQ is fitted with the perception uh, perceptual uh, BSL, uh, uh, perceptual aspect of BSL events. And that output features uh, among those, they have uh, omitted to use the uh, time varying aspect of the model. So that could be the limitation of uh, uh, this kind of model in the later in, the, in my presentation, I'm going to show that this may fail for more complicated uh, setup. So therefore the goal of the research has been to uh, make a non-intrusive BSL metric uh, based on time varying loudness because time varying loudness contains the how we perceive the sound as well as the uh, non-linear mapping from the pressure to the uh, uh, loudness uh, uh, relationship. And we know that the loudness is the most important factor that affects affecting the perception of annoyance. So therefore this uh, also makes sense. In this context, the non-intrusive uh, uh, means that uh, we don't make use of uh, separate PSL, uh, the separate reference signal for uh, PSL uh, metric. And at the same time, another goal is to validate the developed metrics for the more realistic scenarios like uh, loudest, uh, loudspeaker driver units, as well as more complex scenario uh, such as multi-channel audio system. Here, I'd like to give a short introduction to uh, uh, linear deconvolution technique. A uh, log sine sweep can be defined in this equation over here between the frequency omega one and omega two uh, in the period of time of t. If it is a uh, linear sweep, then the inverse filter is uh, simply the uh, input signal itself and reversed along the time axis. However, uh, since it's a logarithmic sweep, we need to calculate the envelope 
as shown in this equation, and this envelope has to be compensated for. And uh, once this uh, compensation is done, then we can get the impulse filter FT and the output impulse filter function or the system impulse response function can be calculated by converting the output signal YT with the uh, inverse filter FT. This kind of a sweep uh, technique has an advantage that we can separate the li linear uh, impulse response function uh, from the rest of the uh, harmonic uh, related uh, impulse response responses. And at the same time, the uh, derived the uh, impulse response function does not suffer from uh, uh, time aliasing, which often be the problem of uh, circular convolution technique. So uh, the idea is to get the uh, linear response, uh, uh, which is calculated by converting the uh, input signal with HT that is derived here as an impulse response function. Um, use that as uh, a reference signal. To validate the idea, we made a uh, simple setup uh, as shown in this picture, where we have placed the microphone uh, close to the uh, um, loudspeaker unit. And in this example, uh, we also show that the uh, artificially created artifacts, which is uh, the uh, uh, metal pieces are placed on the uh, membrane. And in this particular example that we have used the uh, 3.5 inch loudspeaker driver unit, uh, which is uh, used, um, used to assemble the type uh, 4227 uh, mouse uh, simulate, simulator. Zero dB in this case indicates the maximum excitation uh, that does not uh, give rise to the contact between the microphone and the uh, loudspeaker membrane. The, the figure below shows the um, impulse response function in dB. Um, X axis is the sample number. So uh, as I mentioned, the uh, linear deconvolution has an advantage to separate the linear uh, impulse response function and the uh, rest of the uh, nonlinear harmony responses. And uh, by showing that as a dB scale, it's clear that the uh, compared to the linear uh, impulse response function, which is the last impulse in this uh, figure, the rest is actually at least uh, 50 dB down. So the influence of the nonlinear harmonic distortion to the loudness is quite minimal. This uh, slide shows the uh, defects that we made to create the uh, artificial artifacts. Um, two of the defects, for example, bank wrench in the upper left corner, uh, as well as the centered mass condition, um, they are the ones that are significant modifications so that even with the lower excitation level, we could clearly hear the BSR noise. Whereas uh, compared, to, uh, compared to them, uh, um, clip condition is relatively uh, a small modification. And for clip between terminals uh, shown in the lower left corner is actually the uh, minor change that we made. Uh, so that the uh, lower excitation in, in the lower excitation level, we couldn't really hear the BSL noise. But uh, if we excite the uh, driver with a higher excitation level, then we could hear a very soft uh, BSL noise. So uh, these conditions contain the significant ones as well as the uh, non-significant modifications for uh, validating our metric. As I mentioned earlier, loudness is the most important factor that of affecting uh, uh, perception of annoyance. And therefore, making use of uh, time vein loudness is actually a good strategy to uh, quantify BSL event. So what we have uh, shown here in this slide is the loudness spectrogram 
which is the output of the time varying loudness calculation. In the uh, left hand side, uh, there are two plots shown in the uh, uh, linear scale. So the first plot is uh, linear response, so there is no um, PSL events involved. And the second plot shows the uh, actual recording. So the, uh, we're supposed to have a VSL, PSL event in this uh, spectrogram. So what is clear in the linear scale is that we are not able to see the VSL event. And therefore, I have transformed the plots in a logarithmic scale. And what is uh, clear to see is PSL uh, events around the four second. That is uh, clearly audible as well as uh, visible in Loudin's uh, spectrogram. Therefore, what we find out is to it is makes sense to uh, make a use of a logarithmic scale when making a, uh, a metric to determine the uh, PSL event. So, the designed metric is a simple two norm of a difference metric, uh, which is the bit difference between the uh, calculated loudness between uh, measured and uh, the linear response. And the result is then transformed to dB scale. So what we are looking for is the difference where there is no excitation is present. So this black area, if there is a, anything happens there, then uh, we can identify that as a PS, PSL event. This slide shows the effect of uh, excitation level on the calculated metric. Each figure uh, shows the result on each different uh, physical configuration that I explained in the previous slide. It is clear that the higher the level of excitation, it gets uh, easier to detect the PSL event. Most of the conditions, it was quite easy to detect BSL event even at a relatively low level of, level of excitation. However, for clip between terminals, uh, the conditions were rather challenging. In this particular example, uh, it was only detectable when the level of excitation is uh, minus 4 dB and above. And from our informal listening test, uh, uh, this corresponds well with, the, uh, uh, with our experience. So this clearly shows the metric is able to detect the BSL event, event as a function of a different level of excitation. And tool can actually be used to uh, um, a more generalized applications. In the previous uh, examples, we have made uh, relatively large significant uh, um, uh, changes to the physical setup. Uh, so it's uh, probably not very realistic. So uh, to make it more realistic and um, apply to smaller uh, changes of uh, physical setup, uh, we have selected the 13 uh, loudspeaker driver units and tested on uh, overall SPL and TST and Robin bars. Overall SPL is the, basically the uh, uh, frequency response, response function. So the results uh, are shown in the, uh, in the figure. As we can see, uh, most of the loudspeakers, they seem to be quite similar. The, uh, Loudspeaker 4 and 13 seems to be slightly different. Uh, however, by listening to recorded signal, uh, we could find out that the, there was no perceptual difference between these two uh, loudspeakers. So these traditional measures seem to lead to a uh, uh, misleading of the uh, uh, misleading conclusion. At the same time, uh, listening to one of the loudspeakers, we could actually clearly hear uh, the audible broadband burst, which was not detected by these uh, uh, metrics. So that was a loudspeaker three, which had uh, a very audible burst uh, 
uh, during the excitation and to confirm the, uh, uh, that the traditional measure cannot detect the, uh, this event. We have compared the average THD in our urban birds uh, from 13 loudspeakers uh, with the, uh, the result of uh, speaker three. And uh, in terms of uh, THD, they seem to be very similar, but Robin Voss uh, shows that the uh, speaker three is actually even lower compared to the average, um, uh, average result. So clearly that traditional measures cannot detect this event. Uh, however, if we calculate the loud instant spectrogram as shown in this uh, um, uh, plot, um, this audible burst is clearly uh, visible in the spectrogram. And afterwards, we calculated the loudness metric that we have proposed here and uh, seen in the, in the figure below. Uh, that uh, is clearly shows that the uh, loudspeaker 3 uh, stands out of the, uh, out from, from the rest of the loudspeakers. Uh, loudspeaker 4 and 13 were mentioned in the previous slide. They don't seem to be that different, so that also corresponds well with our uh, informal listing uh, result. On top of this, we also made a small damage to the uh, uh, driver unit uh, directly. And we also repeated uh, the test uh, just to see that how reliable the result is. The small uh, slit is visible in this picture that uh, is in the uh, slide. And right hand side shows the uh, frequency res response as well as THT and Robin Buzz. Um, what is clearly uh, uh, visible is actually a frequency response function and uh, THD doesn't seem to reveal um, uh, the uh, reveal the uh, damage. However, um, Robin Dodd's metric uh, seems to be uh, able to distinguish uh, the the um, the damage that we have made. Lower right corner, I, we have displayed the overall loudness as a function of time. Uh, which we call a uh, total loudness versus time function, that if we compare between the loudspeaker two and the loudspeaker two with the slit, there is a clearly uh, uh, increase in loudness uh, 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 with the slit. So this uh, shows the potential on a loudness metric uh, um, this is also due to that the, the loudness metric is actually uh, related to how we actually perceive the sound. So far, we have applied uh, a proposed metric to a rather simple scenario where the uh, delay between the excitation to the microphone is uh, minimal. And at the same time, the uh, no nonlinear processing is involved. However, uh, a typical multi-channel audio system uh, contains the uh, nonlinear processing in the in DSP uh, as well as the effect of room. Uh, so in the next few slides, I'm going to present how the proposed metric uh, performs in comparison with the traditional uh, quality measure such as PAQ. A multi-channel audio system sometimes consists of a uh, large uh, subwoofer, uh, which then excite the, uh, the panels installed inside the car, uh, typically uh, can generate a uh, rattling sound. So such a um, BSL event can be a cause of uh, um, a decrease on this customer satisfaction. So here, since the nonlinear processing is more involved in the uh, a DSP of the multi-channel audio system, uh, we wanted to use uh, a total loudness as a function of time rather than loudness as a spectrogram. Total loudness has the feature that uh, makes a smoothing of the uh, underlying calculated loudness values 
because the uh, temporal integration function is a typically a uh, um, low low a, a low pass filter that makes the uh, the function very smooth, and thereby uh, underlying small changes of uh, the the, the uh, delays uh, may not matter in the calculation of the difference between the reference response and the, in the uh, system on the test. So the idea is uh, first we calculate the HL and HL, which is the um, the impulse response function to the left ear and then the right ear, then convolve that with the input signal XT. Then we can get to the uh, linear uh, response of the left ear and the right ear signal. HT is uh, called the uh, binaural vehicle impulse response function. Typically, is measured uh, between the stereo input to uh, the uh, uh, multi-channel audio system inside the car, and then and then two years of the head uh, head uh, head and torso simulator. The calculated uh, linear response by head uh, is used to calculate the uh, total loudness of, uh, of of that. And then the original signal YT, which is the recorded inside the cabin, uh, is used to calculate the N um, YT. So difference between the, these two and then taking the mean value of that is actually uh, the proposed uh, metric uh, in, the, uh, in the following study. So as I mentioned, the advantage is that this N uh, total loudness contains a little more smoothing function and also the summation across different back bands uh, that can give uh, some advantages uh, when uh, there are a lot of small uh, changes in, uh, in involved in the uh, signal processing of the DSP box as well as the effect of the room. To calculate the mean uh, loudness difference, uh, we have uh, used a binaural loudness model uh, based on the 3 dB loudness summation rule and to, so we, this will then combine the left ear and right ear signal uh, and calculate the loudness uh, uh, values. The left hand side figures shows the uh, comparison between the uh, total loudness of the measured signal and total loudness of the linear uh, uh, part of the signal. So when we look at the low volume versus the higher volume, higher volume uh, increases naturally uh, the loudness. And, and we can see around the 10 seconds at the higher volume that the uh, difference between the measured and then the linear response uh, seems to increase. This may uh, caused by the uh, the BSL events created by the system, and we can see that more clearly by subtracting these two responses, the blue and the red curves. And that is the, uh, that results uh, to the uh, two figures in the right hand side, where clearly uh, shows that at certain uh, frequency of excitation, the BSL uh, events increases. And it's also clearly uh, visible that the higher level of excitation uh, give rise to uh, higher um, the level of uh, VSL uh, signal. This seems to be quite clear on the, the difference, uh, loudness difference uh, function and taking the mean value of this loudness difference function, hopefully we can uh, quantify the difference uh, between the different uh, uh, BSL events created by the, uh, by the systems. This slide compares the result from different metrics used to predict the uh, BSL event. And um, when we use the PEAQ, we have uh, used the linear response as a reference. And so as for the other loudness uh, difference metrics that we have used in the right hand side of the, uh, of the, of the slide. When using PEAQ, it seems that there is no difference among the uh, conditions. And these conditions include the uh, level of excitation as well as different cars and uh, DSP settings. 
so it doesn't seem to uh, distinguish these uh, differences. This may be due to the uh, level, ex level of excitation being uh, quite high. So the uh, BSR uh, event is sort of uh, masked by the, uh, the other uh, changes involved in the uh, um, DSP uh, settings or, 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 or of the level of excitation. So compared to that, uh, loudness-based uh, um, predictors seems to be able to distinguish the difference between the uh, conditions. And from condition one to four, we do not suppose to have any uh, BSR events that was confirmed by the listening uh, test. And then from five to 10, five to 12, uh, we would expect to have some BSR uh, events uh, depending on the level of excitation. Here, due to the confidentiality, uh, uh, we cannot show the uh, result from our subjective listening test, but we have uh, performed a listening test where we asked the subject to judge the uh, BSR uh, noise uh, contained in the signal. And uh, we can mention that the, the uh, total loudness based metric um, Correlates the best with the uh, subjective uh, results. So therefore, uh, this could be a good metric uh, to predict the uh, BSR uh, events when uh, the more nonlinear processing is involved in the, uh, uh, on the uh, system on the test. Summary of the conclusions uh, so far: a non-intrusive BSR testing approach is developed. Uh, the approach does not require a separate reference measurement, uh, so therefore it's more efficient and reliable, we believe. New BSR metrics are developed based on the difference uh, on the time varying loudness spectrogram and the total loudness between the linear response and the measured signal. The uh, uh, loudness spectrogram um, based approach uh, can distinguish the uh, minimal changes, uh, small changes involved in the process, whereas like a total loudness-based approach uh, can sort of uh, the, uh, uh, smooth out those changes, uh, thereby uh, more applicable for the systems uh, that involves uh, uh, small uh, changes uh, on different conditions. Set of uh, artificially generated artifacts are introduced and, and they can, could be characterized quite well with the, uh, the proposed metric. And it's naturally, of course, the high level of excitation give rise to the better uh, uh, and easier way of uh, detecting the artifacts. When a multi-channel loudspeaker system is uh, tested, uh, it's more complex because the, the system on the test it, it involves the uh, nonlinear DSP uh, um, processing as well as the effect of room. And therefore, we have used the uh, total loudness uh, uh, as a metric uh, measure. And then the, the proposed the, uh, metric can easily uh, uh, detect the changes introduced across different conditions, and it matches uh, fairly well with the uh, result from subjective listening test. Um, compared to that, uh, traditional metric uh, PAQ uh, failed to uh, detect the changes across different conditions, and this may be due to the the fact that the uh, um, the um, introduced the changes are much bigger compared to uh, BSR event created by the uh, by the system. Some uh, future works. Uh, we need a lot more samples to validate the algorithm. Uh, so we are looking for a, a collaboration. So if you are interested, we can uh, you are welcome to contact us. Uh, so we can maybe apply our algorithm to your uh, recorded data and. Um, Possibly a machine learning algorithm can actually be used if we want to set, make a more complex border between different types of uh, uh, 
BSR sounds. And as an example, that uh, my one of my students made a project where we have actually made a two different types of uh, rattle uh, sounds, uh, as well as the sound without the rattle event, and then the extracted different types of features and calculated uh, two principal components. On, that, on the x-axis was principal component one, y-axis was principal component two. Then by using the uh, dim neural network, we can distinguish these uh, uh, samples into uh, three different categories and then mark that as different colors. So as we can see that the uh, the borderlines that they are not simple uh, linear function but much more complex function. So the, in such a uh, complex task, we may need to uh, use uh, machine learning uh, to improve the um, the um, uh, the uh, the accuracy of the the quantification that we are aiming at. <clears throat> 